Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Leaders of Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Ferraro, and today we have an excellent guest, Lucian Vita from the Vita Design Group at a Westport, Connecticut. He is one of the predominant modern home builders in the state of Connecticut. I have seen his properties firsthand. You can view it on YouTube. We've toured some. They are breathtaking. I love moderns. I love that Gold Coast uh, waterfront property. Lucian and Vita Design Group is one of the best. Lucian, thank you so much for being on with us today. Oh, it's such a pleasure. So I want to talk about, obviously, the custom home building world. I want to talk about Vita Design Group. And then I want to talk about some things maybe you see coming down the road. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay. Let's get into first, let's talk a little bit about um, how you're seeing the market as far as a custom home builder who's doing high-end, beautiful luxury. Um, we all know that uh, prices of goods have gone up, services have gone up, construction costs have gone up, and some people are kind of stuck between the, do I buy the land, build later? Do I build now? Do I wait? Do I buy an existing house and remodel? From a custom home builder standpoint, I'm sure you guys have crushed it and done really well, but how are you seeing everything? Uh, yeah, pretty much along the lines you just mentioned, um, there was a real surge in, in projects that started at COVID and then, you know, things kept going with uh, as interest rates were still low and, um, you know, people wanted to have projects to work on. We saw a huge influx of, of projects. Um, it's starting to show a trend now towards um, less new construction and more uh, renovation addition, which um, I haven't quite figured out exactly what the, the you know, what's, what's behind that, but that seems to be the trend that we're seeing now. Kind of going away from the new and you're saying kind of taking it down to the studs, keeping the foundation and putting up a new property there. You got it. That's right. Tell, That's talk a little bit about what the benefits, pro to cons on doing something like that is. Well, most of the times we recommend, um, to go with new construction for our clients. Uh, but occasionally there will be projects where it really makes sense to do a renovation or an addition. Um, it really depends on what we're working with. Uh, and so in some cases, for instance, we have somebody who bought a 7,000 square foot home, and uh, but it was built in 2000 and it's the older style and they're looking to kind of like bring it to the newer style. So it might cost half of what new construction would cost to be very thorough, but the layout pretty much works for them. The construction is new enough um, and they're going to get a breath of fresh air and new look to this house, but still maintain all that value from the foundation to the framing, to the landscaping, to a lot of stuff that we won't have to do again. Um, and that seems to be for the people who are having a hard time finding land to build on that was ideal or just didn't want to take on that type of project. That seems to be um, what we're seeing now is, is those type of projects coming to the surface. Got it. So dealing with it in, in the last couple of years and being in this business, um, have you seen, obviously there was a massive uptick. Everybody kind of was doing all different kinds of projects. So it didn't even matter what you were in the spec world. Mostly if you, especially the margins a lot, it's a lot easier, I'm guessing, as a builder to deal with the custom home world because you know exactly what's coming in and you're kind of working with a client. Um, have you seen a change at all uh, in the last, let's say, three months? In uh, cost of construction? And cost of constru construction, uh, consumer demand, people wanting, maybe even people backing out of deals. We're seeing that on the residential side, a lot of deals that are now falling through, even across the country. Um, hmm. kind of what's your trend? Like, what are you seeing? Well, you know, um, it's a mixed bag. So we have some people who, in spite of increasing cost, um, it's just sort of, uh, you know, they might've gotten the land at a, at a relatively good deal. And so, um, and they feel like the market is going to hold and the cost that they're seeing today is basically the cost of doing business. Right. And so they, they want what they want. They have, um, essentially accepted that everything has gone up in cost and they're willing to pay for it. That seems to be the majority of what we're seeing. In some cases, however, you get the situation where uh, people may have signed on expecting a certain, being able to build at a certain number and they signed it at just the wrong time. And, and, and we even got 
uh, uh, you know, we, we produced a bank set for, for them so, to get a, to get financing on. Yep. And once you get locked in with financing, then that's kind of what you have to deal with to build a house. And then we start to go and, and hit at just a time where we don't know exactly where, where the costs were going. And so it's sort of like um, find it out as you go along. And so if the costs come in higher uh, than what we were budgeted at because of this increase in, in materials right. and labor, but they've only been, uh, you know, been financed or approved for a certain amount from the bank, that's where you start to come to these situations where, okay, they have to make up the difference and we really have to try to, uh, you know, continue to work the numbers as much as we can for our clients to, to make all the numbers work, basically. So um, those are challenging, but all the projects, nothing's falling through and all the projects are still going forward. So we're making it work. Gotcha. Gotcha. And in the business of um, development and construction and, and a home builder, you know, you have all different levels of those. And we had Hobbs on, who is an excellent home builder. They do different styles. You know, some people like the classic style. Some people more into moderns. I, I typically like modern. I love the work that you do. Not that I don't like theirs. Um, but when you're dealing with higher and higher upper echelon uh, styles and properties and owners and, and custom home home buyers, um, what do you think the way that you've been able to kind of work in the custom home building world sets the Vita Design Group apart from maybe another option they could choose? What, what, what do you think that is? Well, you know, I think um, especially in today's world, we, we, we attract a, a clientele that is going to build what we would consider a high-end home, not ultra high-end typically, uh, but a high-end home. Um, and budget is is an, is a concern. And so they can't, you know, it, it, it's not like a money is no object type of situation. And mm -hmm. so they come to us because we offer that type of uh, service where we can take the, the, the design and the amenities of the house. And also mm -hmm. uh, we have a, our, our, and on, on the design side, we also have the build side so that we can really marry those two together and make sure that we're trying to target as as closely as possible to get as much of what the owner is looking for out of a project, but while not going above the budget. And so we're constantly, the build and the design team are constantly working back and forth to try to get that sort of approach it to the highest level of construction and design as possible, but while trying to keep the, the budget uh, under control. So um, I think that's where we are a little different than most companies where you might go to an architect alone first um, and then bid out to builders, but not really have a clear sense as to what those numbers are going to come back at. And if you don't have the uh, financial means to sort of say, well, whatever comes that back at, we're going to build it. That's okay. Then that can be problematic. Um, it, so for clients who don't have that, that flexibility, um, they want the assurance that the budget will be looked at along the way to make sure they're not going off course and that we're actually designing a project that they can afford to build. Yeah. What I love about you guys is that not only is that you have the design and then you have the build, but you also have the kind of staging and, and furnishing part of it too. That's true. I mean, talk a little bit about that process to add that in there. Where did that come about? Was it always like that? When did it start? And, you know, what is the origin of that? Well, you know, um, well, I started out just as an architect first. Um, and I saw that people, there were issues with that, right? Like people weren't comfortable with the process of bidding out and the uncertainties that came with it. And so we saw a need in the market and we said, okay, let's combine forces. I, I joined up with my partner, Dave, and, um, and it turned out to be exactly what our clients were looking for. And so just sort of being aware of, of where things aren't working in the system and trying to address those issues. Um, that's exactly how we grew into interiors now too, because we were doing, we were already providing services for interiors having to do with what we call architectural interiors, tile, um, uh, fixtures, things that are kind of built into the structure. Um, but we were not yet providing interiors for soft furnishings, textiles, that type of um, design element. And with every project we had, people would be asking us, do you do this? Do you do this? And we'd always recommend them elsewhere. But just like with the design and the build, there is a much smoother process that comes in, uh, in terms of in terms of cost. We have a really clear understanding of where our, our client's budget is, 
Um, and also in terms of timing and fluidity of the process to just have that in house as well. So Cynthia in our office um, uh, is an interior designer who heads up all the interior soft furnishings. It just made sense to bring that into the fold as well. So it's really a turnkey one-stop shop for our clients. Hmm. And are you finding, because that is so um, boutique and so just one-stop shop, like you said, it's a, you know, just boom, I'm ready. I got it. all the different stages that I need. Are you finding that a lot of the home custom home buyers who are going through this process that like that, are they more local or are you finding they're coming from maybe out of state or out of town, stuff like that? It's a good question. Um, well, I think, I think your question is, is getting at the likelihood that people who are local might be moving their furnishings with them. Um, yeah, kind of. Whereas people further away might be sort of saying, let's start from scratch. Um, but I, cause that, that's what I would expect. Um, however, I think that we're seeing most people saying, you know what, they're, they're leaving their old house, which is a little more traditional and they're looking for something with that speaks to not just today, but tomorrow as well. Uh, going a little more modern, sort of like getting outside of their comfort zone because it's so much more common now that they feel a little more comfortable getting out of that old comfort zone into the new one. And with that, um, we're, I'm just seeing a lot more interest in doing interiors as well, because it would be a lot of times um, they understand, the clients understand that it would feel out of place to insert these kind of more traditional furnishings into this very custom modern uh, setting. And so they realize that that full package is very important. And so most people are actually leaving their old stuff behind, oftentimes selling it with their old house successfully at that too. Um, and I'm not too sure why that is. I don't know why. I, I, I've, I've talked to a number of clients who are selling their houses in, in preparation for this new move and they're selling the furniture. So I assume that it's people coming from out of state that are, are leaving their stuff behind and just want to get set up quick in right. the new spot. So hassle free. seems to be the trend. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so speaking of trends, that was a great segue to my next question, which was going to be because you're doing modern home and, and, and modern homes and the, the style and the property that I toured, again, people can find on YouTube, which the house is breathtaking. It's an amazing example of your work. Thank you. Um, what are you seeing as the kind of the styles change? Um, people want different things. Uh, what are you seeing as the biggest trend that's hot right now? as far as either the design or the build or the interior furnishings? Like is, can you say like one for sure, buy out a question, everybody wants this now, that maybe wasn't a style years ago? Hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I can think one if you can't, but I mean, you tell me if it's, if it's good. I get the two. These are my two. So Okay, let me hear yours. Yeah. Um, modern, again, on a modern home. Um, tempered glass, staircase. And um, the nano doors that, uh, or a slider that goes directly outside. You got to have an inside outside flow. Mm -hmm. That is a big trend, actually. You're right on both of those. Um, although I will say that the, the in, in, in to out flow is kind of, I think, here to stay. Um, mm. And it's been here for a while. We've been really sort of, I'd say, for the past eight years, that's something, or eight to 10 years. It's something that um, has been in demand and right. we've been just finding new ways to really execute that for our clients. Um, and uh, the other item with respect to the stairs, uh, you know, I think that the, the trend has been there for a while with the glass staircases. Uh, but I think people are always looking for something a little bit new and things that they haven't seen yet. And so um, for instance, on a, a project we're doing here in Westport, we have a staircase going up that is uh, sort of steel plate um, side side rails mm. and perforated metal mm. and risers. So when you look through it at different angles, it essentially almost disappears. We like to use that kind of like unusual materials to mm. create new effects. Um, and so and so every time we can create something that we feel that hasn't been seen before, or at least is less common, um, I wouldn't really claim that we're we've done something that nobody's done before. Um, but we're definitely putting things together in new ways that I think um, maybe haven't done, been done before. And so that's what we try to bring to our projects is something special and unique. Um, sometimes glass, for instance, for the stairs would be an element of that, but we try to look to execute it in a new way if possible. Mm. So, so 
So give me some more examples of some things that you guys are kind of on the cutting edge of either putting into your designs or kind of pushing this kind of idea that you guys are doing where maybe more traditional center hall colonial, just a basic Georgian is going to give you what it's going to give. Maybe they'll be modern kind of in style or transitional. But that is different than doing like a modern or a modern farmhouse style, which I think there's people who try to cheat the middle and make it like, well, it's a farmhouse, but it's in modern instead of like, like the one we did and in, in that you showed me in Westport that we did. I mean, that to me, we're being right on the water was the ideal comp, kind of put together of exactly a property that I would want. What what else are you guys kind of leading on? Well, uh, you know, that house that you're referencing is more modern on the interior than the exterior. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm seeing now is actually people, um, you know, interested and willing to actually take that to the exterior more. So flat roofs, uh, sort of a lot of asymmetry, um, kind of there's fewer, there's less and less interest in modern farmhouse now because it's been such uh, done in such abundance recently that oh, okay. people are kind of afraid of kind of um, sort of being typecast uh, in a certain period, almost like, during okay. the 70s, how all the kind of crazy pitch roofs happened. Sure. And they yeah, disappeared. yeah, yeah. So I have, it's amazing how many people are saying to me, no white walls with black windows, please. I, I can't really? do that. Right? So, yes, yeah. Wow, yeah. It's, the trend is already going. Jeez, we just got here. Okay. It, it, well, that's why people come here. <laughs> so, okay. Because there's there's sort of the, the modern that is, that is kind of like, a, it, it has real mass appeal. And then there's that group of people who say, okay, what's next? That's what I want. Um, it, and so that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to provide. Is how do you, next. how do you do that? Because when you say flat roof, when you start to talk about, when you start to get really edgy, I start to think of contemporaries right away. Yes. Even like when we did one on Beachside, which is another YouTube video, like a Roger Ferris ultra minimalistic contemporary where there's, you know, it's super, the angles are very square and rec, you know, rectangular triangle of everything. And it's flush walls. There's not even like light switches out there. When you say kind of the next level, I mean, paint this a little bit of a bigger picture. Cause you know, there's a lot of houses that were sold in the last three or four years that were, you know, when I think it was like 2015, 16, 17, the modern farmhouse remodel was kind of becoming a thing. And then it got everywhere for the last, I don't know, probably three years prior to this. Like anybody who had a modern kind of didn't want to go full contemporary modern. They wanted to go that farmhouse style. Kind of shed some more light. I'm really interested to hear about the the what's if it's not a contemporary and it's not a farmhouse, like what what do you what would you classify that? What does it look like? Well, you know, it's funny because um modern and contemporary are kind of interchangeable words. Um, okay depending on who you're asking. Like some people might associate contemporary with something very specific, um, even though it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily defined by that. Um, but, but, but I think it is more contemporary. I think what we're talking about is, is moving a little more beyond modern into okay. contemporary, if we can use those terms in that way as a, sure. as a progression uh, in, in terms of degree of modernness. Um, so, uh, and along the lines of what you're talking about, the beach that house you referred to, that is where I think uh, the more kind of architecturally focused, sort of sophisticated client is interested in, in trying to achieve. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I mentioned flat roofs, but that's only one, one way of kind of uh, establishing a, a modern appearance. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it with pitch roofs as well. Um, and it's really just sort of presenting the viewer with something that they have to stop and sort of look at it because they've never seen it before, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different take. It's a different, it's presenting itself differently than all the other kind of colonials or, you know, even modern farmhouses that, that yeah. are populating the streets. So it's just sort of presenting the unexpected, uh, yeah. sort of exploring and inventing. And that's where we find our, our kind of um, real fertile ground for creativity. I find that, I mean, it must, I mean, tell me, right? So, if you're if you're a specialist and a custom home builder doing the design work that you guys are, 
obviously the buyers that are coming to you are taking inspiration from maybe something else. Yeah. Maybe they woke up with a dream of this, this thing and they had to write it down and picture it, but also to them, I saw it somewhere on a TV or in a magazine or wherever. Um, I have seen some of the stuff that we have done and we've sold coming from inspirations like LA and the Hamptons, um, where there's, especially in the Hamptons, there was this, it was also a little bit of a rebellion away from everything was like the farmhousey style shingle. And then it became a little bit more, like you said, kind of uh, rock starish, contemporary kind of looking, which is a little bit of L what LA has is kind of like on top of a hill. It's kind of pit square, you know, flat roof and kind of the, the L shaped all glass, you know, walkway. So are you finding that people are kind of, hey, can you make some house look like this? And it has a little bit from one location. Are you finding anything like that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's typically how we, we operate, right? Like we'll want the client to provide us with things that they mm -hmm. love. Um, yeah. Because we're not, if you if you look at our portfolio, it's all over the place. We have some yeah, traditional, right. some modern, everything's a different style because, um, all of our clients are different and right. it's really a reflection of what their kind of vision is. And um, so, so absolutely that that's very, very common practice. And, and we do see, like you're saying, a lot of those inspiration images coming out of the Hamptons coming out of um, the West coast. And, and a lot of times when we get feedback from people who see our projects, they say that they say, Oh, this, this has that East meets West kind of vibe to it. Mm. It feels like it belongs here, but yet, it somehow reminds me of what we're seeing out in like California that we love so much. So mm. that is a, a good observation and, and really a lot of what's um, at play in today's design. What about yourself? Do you have a design that you, you can do it all. You're a master of what you do, but if you had a design that's kind of your favorite or your style, do you have anything that you like now, or you're kind of leaning towards you're starting to get into more? Like, do you have anything like that for yourself? Uh, hmm. I mean, it would definitely be modern. Um, yeah. But outside of that, I would say I, I'm really attracted to kind of playing with contrasts and materials. Um, so you might see something that's very kind of uh, warm, almost rough in texture and organic, sort of juxtaposed against something that is really sort of slick and pristine like glass. Um, mm. And a lot of times it's that, that kind of uh, contrast in these materials that really where they play off each other in a, in, in a very sort of unexpected way. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I find a lot of, uh, you know, enjoyment and kind of creating um, these effects with the architecture beyond just the form, but bringing the materials into it in a way where it sort of, um, you know, uh, sort of like dances off the, reflects off of different pieces differently. Right. Um, I think that that brings the architecture to a whole other level, which is, if I were to build a design for myself, I'd probably use a lot of those techniques. Got it. Got it. Um, as far as someone coming to you and they do want to do a custom, um, what's one of the biggest things that somebody needs to kind of either maybe be prepared for or know about that maybe they didn't know going in? Like one of those uh, fact things that they should know. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of, of specific, um, examples that I've, that I've encountered recently. Um, uh, if I were to say, I mean, it really is just the process, right? People don't know exactly what to expect from the process. Um, okay. it's a fun process. Uh, almost every client that I've had at the end of it, they kind of want to do it again. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's so, good. Yes, it is. I, I actually have a, a client that we built a really fun modern house for down by the beach um, here in Westport. And she's been looking for another lot. And the funny thing is that she came to us when she was like 72 to build her first custom home. And it's like eight years later now, seven, seven years later, she wants to do another one. So wow, she's good, for her. Yes, good for exactly. her. Good for her. And she wants a modern home too? She does a modern? She's in a modern and she just wants to do another one. She's like, I wow. don't know why I love this. She loves it so much. She loves the house that she's in, but it's just the process, right? She wants to do the process again and she wants to see what comes of it. Yeah. But frankly, you don't know what you're going to get 
when you can't walk into the office here, right? You don't know eight months down the road what the end product is going to look like and the right. design side. Right. More than eight months, it's about almost a year and a half to two years by the time you're moved in. But right, right. that design is in your hands after eight months. It's like, huh. A lot of people come and they say, I never, I didn't know what I was going to, to, to get. And they right. love it. And they feel it really should be an extension of them. It should be, it should feel like between how the floor plan lays out and how the exterior looks, they have to walk through it when it's done and feel like it lives the way they live. Uh, I get it. Yeah. They, they can close their eyes and walk through it and know where everything's supposed to be because it came from them. That has got to be the cool. I watched my parents build a home. Um, we live in a little house and I watched my parents build a home right in my senior year as I'm about to go off to college. They built, decided to build a custom home and it was just so cool. Um, obviously they didn't work with somebody at your caliber. I'm sure the process would have been a lot less stressful, but, um, it's just Very always stressful. cool. And it's a dream to like, get to build it, you know, like just to get to design this and work with really good people. So that leads me to my other, uh, to one, another question, which is, when you start getting down to brass tacks and it's all sounds great and you really jive really well with the builder and you, you have the architect and the builder and in the interior design and furniture, this is amazing for sure. And then it starts to get down to maybe the build cost. And this is always the other side of this, which is, and I think everybody kind of has a hard time with trying to figure out, well, but I want to work with you, but what's your price per square foot build for this job? And I think then that's what happens is then the shopping happens is like, well, who does what jobs for certain price points for certain people? I'm sure money is no issue and they can just, I like you, you're working with me and that's what we're going to do. But how are you finding the price per square foot now? Because we've talked to a bunch of home builders that I know and we've had on and we kind of get a feeling of where the price per square foot was compared to where it is now. Obviously the custom home build price per square foot has gone up. That's just, everything has. So you would expect that to go up, but where are you yeah. seeing that price per square foot for what you're doing uh, falling these days or say like, you know, just pick a size, pick a whatever, just something general, super off the back of the envelope kind of thing. Sure. Um, well, it's a, it's a great question. Good observation. Um, because that's always how the project starts, right? That's that's your formula for helping establish a budget day one. Uh, you know, we create a proposal. We have to, for our clients, we have to come to an understanding together of what is the project, what's going into it, how big is it, what is the level of, uh, of amenity and detail, and also what does it translate into in terms of cost? And that's your formula. You say, okay, I want a house of this quality and size. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you say, okay, well, that quality is going to cost a certain amount per square foot, then you multiply it by the size and there's your budget. Right. And it was ranging anywhere from say three years ago, anywhere from 400 a square foot to say 700 square foot mm -hmm. for our projects. Um, I know other, other architects and builders can do it for less and others do it for more. That's yep. but. Our, if you look at our buildings, that's what they cost to build. Um, Got it. And now we're probably looking at about uh, anywhere. I, I would say it's gone up by about 20%. So you're probably looking um, at about 500 to 800 or so. Okay. Um, so for the comparable, everything's kind of split up by about $100 a square foot. And is that including everything that's hard cost that's 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 bringing in utilities that's 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 everything or is it just build and your your portion that's also a great question and it's and it's such an important question because so there's so many ways to slice and dice what you're counting and the uh, cost of construction and so a, a client should educate themselves a homeowner should educate themselves as to how that's being defined the way we define it is everything that it costs to go into the house uh, separate from like furnishings um but when it comes to like tile fixtures like i mentioned all the hard um the architectural interiors plus all the engineering permitting cost architecture fees construction management fees all that really should be lumped up in that cost per square foot because when somebody's asking how much is this going to cost me they have to have the money to cover that they don't want to know two thirds of that cost. And then yeah. you find out another third from other stuff that you kind right. of left out down mm -hmm. the road. So we're very upfront about that. We want to make sure that we're really educating and, and, and helping our clients plan accordingly. We might not be the right fit for them, but it's better to find out at the beginning that um, they're paired up with somebody 
who they can work with that fits their budget than find out halfway through a project. It's very frustrating when that happens. So we don't like to play games like that. We like to make sure we um, include everything that we know is going to uh, contribute to the cost of the project. So you have an, you're an all-in cost. So you're, I, I mean, a company like you guys, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're invoicing everything, you're blocking it all off, you're explaining step by step. That's great. Well, um, go ahead. Beyond that, it's all 100% transparent. So uh, we're construction management models, which means that um, rather than saying, okay, we're going to build at this much per square foot, and then let's say um, somebody wants extra, something that was never discussed. Right. Um, and we say, well, um, you know, well, that's going to be in addition to that. That's not the way we operate. Once we have a design, we break that down into a line item um, estimate for them. And then as we go into construction, any of the bills that we get from subs, uh, you know, labor and material, that all flows through to the client. So they see what we're getting for our fee. They see exactly where all the money is going on the project. So um, we insist on that type of transparency, it, it makes the process, it puts us on the same side as our clients, which is very important to us. Gotcha. Gotcha. So time timeline. Uh, I think one of the biggest things for people too, is it sounds all great and I like it. And I want to go for it, but how long do you think the process uh, for you guys um, runs comparatively to maybe somebody else? And I think that again, this also goes to your own process, your own communication level, your own watching over the project to make sure it's all done correctly and on time. But typically, what's your project timeline and has your project timeline gotten longer because of kind of a, a stoppage or shortage of materials? Um, okay, so the construction timeline is generally a lot more reliable than the design timeline. So at the start of a project, we'll establish a schedule for the design process and for the construction process. Um, and we'll update the schedule for the construction process before construction starts, but at the end of design, because only then are we really certain that, okay, this is actually what we're building. Right. The beauty of that is that all the decisions have been made. And right. so we're very good at being able to say, this is how long it's going to take to build that design and, and actually coming in at that time. And so typically 5,000 square foot house might take around a year to build. Okay. Um, there's a lot of variability there, but that's, that's your sort of average. And um, on the design side, it's a little less predictable uh, because so many things factor into it. Um, you don't know if you're going to be coming up against any kind of things that the owner might want to do that require special permissions that put you into two or three months more permitting. Um, there might be a third parties that come into play, engineering and, and structural engineer that sort of affect that timeline. But most um, mostly it is how quickly we can get to the client's vision, how good we are at interpreting that and giving them what they're hoping for right away, as opposed to having to take successive tries. And also how good the client is at really conveying those ideas and sticking to decisions. Um, and sometimes people need to see a lot of different versions and sometimes people need to see one version. And so the, the, the timing of the, that it takes to design a house is really strictly a function of that. It's um, if, if we're very good at interpreting and you're very good at saying, yep, that's what I want, making decisions, we can have a house designed in six months, um, mm. you know, outside to in and ready to build, permitted. Um, that timeline can literally double right. in the worst case scenario when right. there's a lot of soul searching and discovery to be done. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excellent. I mean, you knocked every one of these questions out of the park, man. I think you've filled our audience with a ton of answers and information, a lot for them to think about. Um, wanted to ask you um, also on the building side, there's really very little to no new constructions on the market and available at all. Um, I don't think you guys are afraid of spec, but obviously you guys are so good at customs. Are you looking at doing any, any spec builds or anything like that? And where do you see that market? Yeah. You know, I tell you what, it's a, doing custom homes is a double-edged sword because we love working with our clients and, um, and it's very rewarding. And I think the projects, the products that we put out are oftentimes have a greater, higher level of architectural integrity because these because there's no, we're not trying to sort of hit a mass audience. Mm. Instead, we're, um, you know, we're, 
and, that, and oftentimes our clients aren't building simply based on retail, they're building based on passion for design. Um, and that ultimately leads to a wider variety of results and, and interesting design results. Um, so for that reason, we love working with our clients. On the other hand, uh, you know, working with clients can be challenging. Like I said, for us to manage a process that could either take six months to design or a year to design becomes a challenging prospect from a business standpoint, right? How do we sort of, how do we work with clients to, um, you know, get, we don't want to limit uh, the time that we want to devote in the project. They might need a year to see a lot of different versions, but we also want to try and keep the cost of our services down. And so it's much more challenging from a, a business standpoint um, trying to manage a, a, a client project than it is a spec project. A spec project, we call all the shots. We say what's going to go in, in the building. There's no sort of, um, it would only, we'd only be imposing at additional time and expense on ourselves if we were to do multiple versions of it just because of our own sort of, um, uh, what would you call it, insistence on getting mm -hmm. this perfect. Um, but it makes the process a lot easier to do spec houses. So we do a little bit of both. I'd say, I shouldn't say we do a little bit of both. The fact is that the majority of our work is custom. Mm -hmm. We might do, we, we do a little bit of spec. Um, okay. Just because those are, those are a little bit easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any projects coming up that you can talk about or you're thinking about? Spec projects? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we actually have one here in Westport. Um, it's a, we found a small lot and sometimes, you know, we're kind of gluttons for punishment. We rather than take the easy ones that we can sort of do in our sleep, we take the really challenging ones that nobody else wants because we know that they don't want it for lack of vision, really, right? Mm. So we say, no, we, we can make something of that. So we found okay. a very small lot on the river, on Saugatuck River here in West Nice, Virginia. nice. And we'll be building a house on that. And it was one that had been sitting on the market for years. Um, nobody could figure out what to do with it. And um, so we have. It's going to be a small house, like a 1800 square foot house, but it'll be a, the configurations can vary. It's either a three or four bedroom, um, three or four and a half bathroom configuration. So we've got a lot of function and a little footprint, um, but really it's going to be a wall of glass out the back of the house. Like That's the awesome. The dock. So it's because be you know what though, 1800 square feet where everybody who really wants to get down there, does not want a monstrosity. They want something that's functional beautiful and something that, you know, um, for a lot of people, that's a downsized destination too, or secondary home and having a lot is not always better for a lot of different right. reasons. And if it's a Vita design group spec home, I have got to see this thing. So you have to keep me, uh, posted on how that's going. We'll do a walkthrough. Oh, heck yeah, we do. That's uh, going to be amazing. <laughs> so everybody listening, um, stay on me about keeping on him about getting this thing, uh, taking a look at it. But Lucian, uh, I thank you so much for coming on. You shed so much light to the custom home build space and to the spec build space. You are phenomenal to work with. I've seen your product firsthand. You are top notch grade A, one of the best around and anybody out there who is in the market looking, thinking about, uh, interviewing or talking to a custom home builder, you need to talk to Vita Design Group and Lucian. Lucian, where can they see more of your guys' work and also reach out to you? Well, um, we have to update, update our, a lot of our marketing because we've been so busy producing lately. Crushing it. Put a lot of, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of our stuff is old, but it's on vdgarch.com is our website. And of course, if, if anybody would ever love to stop by uh, at our office location, we're at the intersection of Route 1 and Route 33, uh, which is Riverside Avenue here in Westport. Um, it's one Wilton Road in Westport. And just full disclosure, his office is great, and it's right next to my office. So uh, if you ever want real estate advice, too, we're right there as well. But stop by his office, go. reach out to him, take a look at their website. You get a great example of some awesome work that they've done. I also have a YouTube video that we did on a, prop, on a project that they finished for a client in Westport, which came out beautifully. So check that out. That's another great example. And I'm sure there will be more to come. Lucian, thank you so much. Give my best to Bob and Cynthia and to everybody at the office. You guys are rock. And thank you again so much for being here. Thank you, Mike. Great questions. And I always enjoy the, uh, the repartee. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Frau, Leaders of Lifestyle podcast. Till next time, take care.
Hushin, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. You rock it. Always. So thanks, I'm going to hang up on this thing and we're going to stop the recording. And then Rob, you can cut it right there. Lucian, thanks, man. Really appreciate it. We'll be you in touch it. as soon as I get this going. We'll rock it. And then let me know on that spec. I got to come see the property. Absolutely. Yeah, it's right down the road. So yeah, right. yeah, we'll, we'll walk there one day. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that spec might become a custom pretty soon because somebody is like, wait, what's happening? And then you're not going to have time. Someone's gonna... Literally two days ago, somebody was like, hey, do you have anything? I, I showed it to him and I'm, I'm already sending him drawings of it. So we'll of see. Course. We'll see there's, there's, there's no such thing. <laughs> it's going to go right. so fast. All right, man. Take care. Yeah.